How many folks are attending for the first time? I can go, wow, oh, oh, okay, great, fantastic. Well, we thought it might be an interesting idea to show you very quickly around the organ a little bit. What is this thing that we're playing? Well, it's a pipe organ, but it doesn't sound a whole lot like what you hear in church on Sunday. At least I hope it doesn't sound like what you hear in church on Sunday. <laughs> this organ was built by the Wurlitzer Company in 1926. This was the finest instrument that they ever built. They built some that were larger, but they didn't build any that were better known or that sounded better or that had a higher profile than this in the New York Paramount Theater of Times Square in New York. The organist was one Jesse Crawford, who was the best known musician and highest paid musician in the world in 1926. He is reputed to have made $60,000 a year playing this organ at the Paramount Theater annually, as well as augmenting that income with recording fees and royalties and also uh, uh, making uh, broadcasts and so on. His wife was the associate organist and she brought down $30,000 a year. So over the two of them, they had an income playing the theater organ in 1926 of over $100,000. That's a lot of money for the time. Well, some things have changed in the organ world. However, we still have a lot of fun with an instrument like this. It's called a unit orchestra. Why? It was voiced as closely as possible to imitate the sounds of orchestral instruments. That was as close as they could get with wind-blown pipes. Now everything that you hear this evening is an acoustical wind-blown instrument, whether it be the pipes that create the sounds of the orchestra or it be the actual percussions and the traps. And what we have sitting up there are real marimbas, real xylophones, real drums, real chimes, real all sorts of things, and they're struck by pneumatics, just like a person would strike these things uh, in person. So it's a very, very interesting instrument. Thinking about it that way, it's the world's original synthesizer. And because these organs were traditionally installed in the old theaters, to the left of the proscenium arch and to the right of the proscenium arch, it was also the world's original stereo. Well. The organ is laid out behind the screen up here from side to side in four different huge pipe rooms, thousands of pipes this organ has in it, ranging from one that's about a half inch tall and the diameter of a typical pencil to the largest one being more than 32 feet tall, constructed of two inch thick lumber and 34 inches square at the top. It looks like the funnel off the Queen Mary, and it sounds like the funnel off the Queen Mary, as a matter of fact. All right, so that's what a unit orchestra was. They were introduced into movie palaces because they were capable of taking the place of a full symphony orchestra. This type of sound that this instrument gave was bigger and fuller and fuller and bassier and uh, just more spectacular, typically. Plus, you could get all of the music in the theater over the course of the week, played by two or three different organists instead of 50 musicians in the orchestra pit every day. So the biggest theaters gave both, but many theaters, over 10,000 of them in the United States, had theater pipe organs or unit orchestras like this, not as large, but they did the yeoman duty and gave most of the music. So if you went to the silent films in the 20s, there was about a 95% chance that you would hear those films being scored on a theater organ. Well, we thought it might be fun to just go around and show you some of the different sections of the organ very quickly. We have all the different sections of the orchestra, the different divisions, the brass, and we've got a number of brass stops of fanfare reeds and trumpets and so on. There's one of those. And another one there. And another one here. And then we have a couple of tubas, and they sound uh, very much like a huge French horn section in the treble. And a smaller one. And then we have stops that are called diapasons. They're a typical church organ sound. They sound like this by themselves.
or I can press one of these buttons under the keyboards, a piston or a preset, and we can have instantly the sound of the cathedral organ. Then we have the woodwind section. Well, things like the clarinet, Then we have a couple of, uh, actually a number of different sort of oriental sounding reeds, if you will, that sound like this. And I'll play them one at a time for you. An orchestral oboe, and an oboe horn, and a musette, and a crummet. Funny things that you've never heard before, but it's great for charming snakes. little sounds like that that don't have a lot to do particularly with the orchestra in a certain section. But we've also got the sounds of the bowed strings of the orchestra. Right down to the bowed bass viols down below. That sounds and we've got the little orchestral flute as well. There's that tiny little pipe. <laughs> and conversely, I said about those big pipes, those are the sounds of some of the biggest pipes as well. Woo, woo. All right, we've got fat flutes called tibias on the theater organ, and we can use them two ways. First of all, without the tremulance or the vibratos, to imitate the circus calio. kissing on the screen. <laughs> so all sorts of fun little things that you could do. There was actually a French horn back there. sets of what they call vox humanas. For you Latin experts, you'll know that that means human voice. And this to an imaginative hearer was to sound like a choir of angels humming in the distance. It sounded like frogs croaking in the swamp. <laughs> Another one of the many hats that the theater organ wore. Well, let's look very quickly at some of the percussions that were back there. The marimba, like we said. And xylophones. And also a glockenspiel if I can find it, and a celesta, and a vibraharp. And then, of course, we had chimes, And as well, there were a number of sound effects so that you could add sounds when things were happening on the silent screen. We had things like a fire gong and a boat whistle, a 
locomotive whistle, birds, we have the wind whistle, the whoopee whistle, we have a loud bell, a white bell, and a soft bell. We have the horse hoof, and we have a Chinese gong. We have a roll symbol, we have a tap symbol, and also some timpani back there as well. Well, we can hit the bass drum, we can add all of those symbols, and then back here turn on the snare drum and somewhat march the band down the aisle. You could do that. There was a set of real tambourines back there. And then the wood block, the tom-tom, and then a couple of other symbols that we've already heard. There's a triangle back in the back. So all of these things appeared then on these red, white, yellow, and black stop keys all over the instrument. And you had these preset combination action buttons that every organist would come in and set their sound so they could get around quickly on the instrument. The organ always plays at one volume back there, all those wind blowing pipes, and that is loud. And so these big black pedals up here opened the wall up literally with Venetian blind like swell shades that open one at a time. And as the wall opens, the sound gets louder and louder and louder. The whole thing is powered from downstairs with a 50 horse turbine jet engine type blower that's someplace around 10 or 12 feet long and stands as tall as I do. It's a huge affair and then comes up into the bowels of the building through a 24 inch galvanized metal wind line that goes off into all sorts of different parts and reservoirs and regulators that regulate the wind and make everything steady or make it shake depending on what you want. So that, in a nutshell, folks, is what made up a mighty Wurlitzer Theater Organ. The company that built this was indeed the Wurlitzer Company, one of the best known names in music in the entire world.